area of heavy rain is in parts of Missouri, a little bit into Illinois as well. This is where we do have a flood watch. This is a zone where just a little over a week ago, we were dealing with very heavy rainfall. And so again this morning, concerned about flooding and flash flooding. You can see where the heaviest of rain is right now. It has settled down into generally southern Missouri and northern Arkansas. But we have other flash flood warnings. One here where we had some existing overnight rainfall in central Missouri. Another one in St. Louis too, where a little uh, tail end of a storm has popped and is training moving over some of the areas already hard hit but also moving slowly so these are all the hallmarks of a concern for flash flooding slow moving thunderstorms big rainfall rates raining in an area that already was hit hard with heavy rainfall and here in the st louis area two to four plus inches of rain has fallen in the last 12 hours so st louis under a the county under a uh, flash flood warning includes kirkwood maryland heights university city this goes until 11 45 local time and you've had all three of those ingredients already. The training thunderstorms, the slow moving thunderstorms, the very heavy rainfall that has already happened in the last several hours. Clay City, Illinois, we're looking at the little Wabash River as a potential for flooding. You can see what we are forecasting, a crest of 22.8. Um, that would get up into the moderate flood stage. And you, you see that big jump. I mean, that's a flash flood, right? When you see a huge jump in the streams and small rivers, and that happens really in short order in a situation like this. Then we jump over into some of the other flash flood warnings now into northern Arkansas and southern Missouri. Fulton, Randolph Sharp, that includes Cherokee Village, Mammoth Spring, and Pocahontas. This goes until 9.15 local time. The rain, the heaviest of the rain came in first, but you can see how it's just all slow to move out. So there's no relief at all coming. Jonesboro, just off to your west, is where we do have a flash flood warning, including Jackson and Lawrence counties, Alicia, Sedgwick, and Swifton under this till 10.55 local time. Really big rainfall rates within this and more than an inch per hour. That is one of the concerns for the flash flooding risk. Here are some of the radar estimates. Look at how much rain has happened. you south of St. Louis, radar estimates of more than uh, five inches, in fact, close to six inches of rain. At the airport, we had more than four and a half inches of rain in St. Louis measured. Uh, we know, you know, estimates estimates of six to almost seven inches of rain south of there and in the other zone where we do have a flash flood warning estimates of five or six inches of rainfall. So we did have 4.32 um, that fell before midnight so that was a record for the day. Our second wettest August day on record and yes the rain is still falling. We're continuing to watch though with the front moves east that's been causing all this rain out ahead of it and we still have areas like southern parts of Ohio and Kentucky in the zone for potential flash flooding today and that of course includes the very very hard hit Eastern Kentucky where we've been showing you the scenes of flooding. Let's go back to Justin Michaels who's been live for us. He, for example, where we go to 101, compare that to Providence, 93. So two pockets of heat really building, one in the Central Plains, another across portions of the Northeast. Heat advisories here, like they feel like they've been all summer. We again are looking at that risk today with temperatures going up and as well as the with the humidity in the air, the heat index going up to dangerous levels. 104 is that forecast high in Dallas. Again, we keep our 100 degree plus streak going and dew points this morning are starting off near 70. Dallas, Lufkin, we're in the mid 70s, Shreveport mid 70s. That kind of air makes it really difficult for your body to cool off. You'll sweat. It's hot outside, but that sweat won't evaporate and it just won't allow your body to cool down. The thing is, you notice how through the afternoon we do get dew points to drop off a little bit across Texas. It, the ground is just so dry. There's no moisture in the air. So as you get some mixing that happens just in the daytime, you will we'll get some of those uh, dew points to drop. It's just not really going to make a difference because all that does is actually allow the temperature to go up even more. It feels like at 106 in Dallas today, 107 in Oklahoma City, same thing in Shreveport, and the heat is on there. That has been, you know, mainstay of our summer. Northeast, we've had our a heat wave already, but now we're back in one. This one does last. These heat advisories go through tomorrow. We go through the weekend though with the numbers up so we'll have to keep an eye on those advisories for you potential record highs in parts of new england and then into eastern pennsylvania tomorrow here's how hot it gets scranton 95 it's not a record but it's close philadelphia should tie a record at 98 Boston, our record to beat is 96. We're going to 98 degrees. You got a little bit of a break yesterday, Boston, when your wind turned around from the east. And you know how I say there's nothing good about an east wind. Well, with a forecast like this, there is actually. It could give you a break, but we're just not going to see that. And look at D.C. The feels like going up to dangerous levels for hours this afternoon. You know, Alex, I do say that often. You know, no such thing as a good thing as an east wind. But, um, in sometimes, case, yeah, sometimes there is, and that was nice yesterday afternoon. It, it's a well, rarity. 
but it, that it way today. Yes. You'd be wish, no you're wishing for it. <laughs> exactly. All right, well, yesterday we were asking folks about summer. As we're kind of winding down, you, you kind of want to give summer its flowers before it's all over, <laughs> right? So we were asking what you really like about summer. Uh, well, I mean, like 70% of the votes yeah. for summer feeling or summer S spirit. Somehow, if we could carry that into the fall, I think we would have the perfect season. A summer spirit with fall weather. Mm. Yeah. That would be perfect. Yeah, you got something there. All right, all right. Well, you spent all this time dodging the heat. And, it. and there are these little tricks and like, so some people say you shouldn't put meat in there. Some mm. services that you can subscribe to will accept meat. Oh. It, so it's like, well, it's how do you know? Like, right, right there's, I think there's a smell factor. Ah, uh, that, that, that might have something <laughs> to do with it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right, well, let's get you to the out there as we hit. Ooh, uh, that has been uh, the story of the week, right? Last few weeks, right? Just a lot of rain in a number of places, which has led to a lot of flooding. Yeah, I mean, there's what, been four or five of those like 500,000 year flood type events yeah. in the past week. Yeah, which mm -hmm. is just nuts. It has been tremendous. Oof. We wanted to share with you a look at all of the places in Kentucky that we have seen flooded uh, communities. And this is just, you know, we, we hear from our live reporters from Justin Michaels, Chris Warren, Charles Peake has been out here sharing some of the video and th these are just 14 of the communities that we have been in and there certainly are more we know right. it's just so widespread in eastern kentucky that's the thing it's not just one local spot very widespread well let's head to one of those spots now where justin michaels is against still system that brought all the rain to st louis this morning and overnight last night is on the move back into this area. Yeah, so let's talk about the, the threat from that as we work our way through the day. Chance for some stronger storms, actually, for really heating back I up. I know. If only that rain would come and give us a break, I th think it might make it um, be a little more steamy. We've got heat advisories that are up here into the northeast. These go through tomorrow. Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, all in it. Temperatures going up to 97 today in Philadelphia, and Boston will be 97 as well. We got a little relief yesterday in Boston from that east wind. Not today. It's going to be an offshore wind, which will keep us hot. That'll be a record 97. Philly will be close. The record to beat is 98. We'll come close in Concord, New Hampshire, in Albany, and in Wilmington, Delaware, all within a degree or two of record high temperatures. What's going to make this worse is that it is going to feel just so steamy out there with these dew points in the 70s. We see that through the afternoon hours. I mean, look, no relief coming in. Even when we get some showers or storms that do pop, be a little more widespread tomorrow, actually, in the area. It's not going to do much to break the heat. We're not going to have a clean sweeping front come in today. We've got the heat index of 104 in Philadelphia. Tomorrow, the temperature of 93 degrees and the heat continues. And also here in the Southern Plains, just can't catch a break this summer. Potential drawback that you can't see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it stinks that we did not get to this topic during our garden week, but, you know, thankfully we sniffed out some more time for this discussion. If anybody knows how to put perfume on this pig, it is. A so you did a TikTok on handling the smelly business of composting. Let's talk through this. Why should people push through that gross part of the process to do a, to a compost pile? Hey, 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 Jen and Alex, and good to talk to you. Oh, oh my gosh. It's so how should we set up our kitchens here for composting? And what are some of the things that we should be putting in or avoiding uh, in our bin before heading to the to the flower beds? That, that's a that's a great right into pun intended, you know, any topic that you are working on and learn so much about it. So how does the weather play a role in composting or does it? It, it, it really does, uh, Jen. And thank, thank so many benefits. It's to a this, win win. Right? Uh, so what's this tip about crocs in composting? About, I'm sorry, what was that? Crocs and composting? Crocs and composting. I'm not familiar with that one, Alex. What's that about? That's, I was trying to find out what that was as well. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's not, that's not, now I was thinking you are talking about the crocs on the feet because I. That's exactly right. And this is the reason why we wanted to bring composting into our garden week because there's long-term benefits, not just the short term of maybe you have a better garden, but there's long-term benefits for the atmosphere. And your discussion of composting ties right up with another discussion we have with Jerry James Stone about reducing food waste. So it's all about, you know, these long-term goals in addition to, you know, saving money, wasting less, et cetera. Dr. Marshall Shepard, thank you so much for being here. That suggests the conditions can make it harder to deliver water and electricity in the next few years.
But it seems like cutting back on water use is can only be a small percentage of the story. Right, how much can that really, really help in the, in the scope of things? Right, right? because we are so low. Right. It really, you need, it's sort of like you need to do that because you can't let it get any lower. And then, then it's like, okay, where, where else you can where look for energy sources? There? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is a, it's a tough situation, but at least they're thinking about it now. They're not just kind of putting mm -hmm. their hands. Telling stories like this too raises the attention so that you know, people who need to conserve water do it, mm -hmm. you know, when they see just how dire it could be. Well, looking for solutions to the trip stand. <laughs> Chasing the it bears away. There's bears. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, great view. It. And you'll it's have a chance to view some storms, actually. So maybe more of those lightning shots or rainbows. Good pick. Morticia. Well, that's appropriate. <laughs> it is. Uh, there you go. The forecast in Cincinnati for the day. Mid-80s is the uh, chance for some thunderstorms as we head through the I day. I bet you, like, high heat humidity makes it smell worse. Oh, doesn't it always? Well, just like your compost pile in the backyard, right? <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Good Helping job. Us, Keep it going. Help the environment. Or maybe doing some composting. We have that on the show today. <laughs> we can help you out with that. Greg, how's your garden? Uh, my garden? We do have some great tips on the show today. And one of the many discussions we're having, we're also talking about the hurricane season because a new update from mm -hmm. NOAA on the outlook for the season comes out today. And you've got some scoop as well on things. So we'll get to that. Yeah, we will. Yeah. We want to tune in because it may be quiet now. All right, let's get you the snapshot here for us. And of course, we're still... That's a discussion we'll have in about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, you're going to want to stay tuned to that because the atmosphere normally... Right, that is just ahead. Well, we pile up the problems that is in today's big